What doing over there, Zobeans? Mm hmm? Are you just gonna wander around and be weird for a while? Mm hmm? All right. How about now? <clears throat> Serena, Luke, you guys got me now. We sounding okay? I uh, got my light on. Everything should be cool. Somebody let me know that we're in a good spot. As you guys are coming in, my name is Joel. I'm a dog trainer. Uh, kicking it here with my girl, Zoe. And if you guys have ever caught my stream before, we will be heading out. Oh, God to the spring poll shortly. Uh, if we can get about 10,000 likes sometime around 1245, we're gonna run out of spring poll. Zoe's gonna smash. We'll let Scooby do his obedience. What up, Clutch? Good to see ya. Um, hope your pup is doing well. Guys, is your chime coming in? Make sure you tell me where you're at, uh, what kind of pup you guys are dealing with. You guys have questions on your dogs? Throw them in the comments here. Let's get a little conversation going. So again, today's conversation, I want to encourage you guys to literally stop training your dogs. I'm actually going to throw out the video tomorrow morning, which is the third part in this series, where I want you guys to dedicate for an entire week not to do one training thing with your dog. All I want you to do is find every opportunity to play with your dog. So if you guys play with your dog, drop in the comments, tell me what you play. What's your dog's favorite game? You guys play in tug, you guys play in fetch, you guys doing some kind of nose work. You know, I know a lot of people that just chase their dog around and try to grab their butt. Uh, and that may then as well be the game that you guys play together. So somebody tell me about your game uh, as you guys are hanging out. Thank you, Mountain Sunshine, for the follow. Uh, again, guys, my name is Joel. I'm a dog trainer. I own Scoob and I Dog Training just south of Atlanta. Uh, I specialize in dogs with big behavioral problems, aggression, reactivity, anxiety, and we solve as many of those problems as we can with play. Number one, most of my clients get really bored with sit, reward, move, sit, reward, move. So let's make it more fun. She likes lure toys and that's it. Uh, lure toys like if you're doing a um, lure coursing or if you're doing some kind of, um, what do they call that, fast cat? Is that what you're talking about as far as lure toys? Um, and if that's the case, how does she do with the flirt pole? A flirt pole can be kind of your handheld take with version of that. So that's kind of the thing I want you guys to hit on is what are the games that you play? Thank you for the follow, Boston Joey. Uh, make sure as you guys are hanging out, we're tapping that screen. We're going to need to get to 10,000 likes today before we go out to the spring pole. Um, so here's the thing with play that I find with most dogs, okay? My, most dogs struggle to do the thing when life gets exciting. So if we go outside and there's birds, squirrels, people, cars, cats, whatever, even just smells, dogs like those things better than just being bored and sitting in the living room. So a lot of times those things are gonna be more stimulating, cooler, more interesting, and you're gonna have a hard time getting your dog's attention. So when people come to me and they're having behavioral problems, they're like, my dog sees another dog, they want to pull, they want to bark, they want to lunge, they want to get scary, yada, yada, yada. I tell them to sit, I tell them to down, I tell them whatever, and they absolutely will not listen. They are so far away from listening to the words that you are saying, we're not even on the same planet as we are engaging in that action. And here's the thing, that's work, okay? Sit down, come, those are work. You're asking the dog to do an action for a reward. That's work. 
if I can't get you to freely take the food, if I can't get you to freely bite the tug, if you won't chase the ball, then we've got a way bigger problem than trying to tap in the obedience, sit, come down, stay and heal. So whatever the thing is that motivates the dog, we've got to start there. And we probably can't even start in that situation. Uh, so let me check in. Some people dropping some things here. Um, somebody that needs to be ignored. Uh, I've done makeshift flirt pulls and she loves it. Has zero interest in any other a play except for some tugging on the rope. Now there's the thing, right? When we can get that some tugging on the rope, that means that she understands or at least is able to enter the initial discussion, initial game rules of what may be able to grow. So if I can hold a tug toy and the dog is interested enough to grab it in their mouth, I can then build that with a good number of dogs into a fully functional game. If we think about when we start to play games, if we don't start to win very, very quickly, we get very, very bored. And if that happens, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buzz off, right? So if the game is grab this pen from my hand, right? And you come in and I go, right? And you're like, no, nah, 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 very funny, right? But then I go, no, seriously, come on. Come on, let's play. Hope. You can do it. Come on, put some effort in. Hope. And you got it. One, ha ha, sucker. What just happened in here? You just had, I can't snap with that finger right now. I'll talk about that soon. You just had, boom, emotion, motivation, drive, a reason to play. If you don't have that, then you don't have anything moving and grooving, right? And that's the thing, right? If I go, hey, grab this, and you're like, yeah, I want that. Oh, sucker, you better try harder. Now we're finding a way to get the dog to try harder to do the thing. That's where we build in motivation. Motivation to do the thing, do the thing with who? With you. Now we're building relationship. So now we have motivation, we have relationship. So now if we can motivate the dog to do the thing somewhere in the vicinity of things that are less than comfortable, now we can start to bring confidence in. Motivation, relationship, confidence. You don't have those three things. I don't even want you to be working on sit, come down, stay, or heal yet because you're not ready. Your dog is not ready and we've got more to do. What's good, Nick? Hope you are well. We're trying something a little bit different today. We're trying to get the conversation going. We're trying to have more of that chat style rather than just me playing with my own dog. So, um, you know, Nick, you're probably a pretty good example. I know that I see you do a lot of stuff with Charlie that is work, reward, work, reward, work, reward. Did that start with just building love of the ball? Or did you start training in that transactional matter, work, reward, work, reward? Um, do I want you to stop training your reactive dopamine? Yes. Yes, I do. So... I want you to stop training your reactive Doberman, not overall, not forever, but putting those parameters on play, making it a reward, making it transactional, having that expectation of our reactive dogs can very often slow our progress, right? Again, your, what, is your, what is the real problem with your reactive dog okay for most reactive dogs it's that when they see another dog person car whatever their specific trigger is it's causing emotions and so if i can build the dog up little by little by little make the dog stronger more confident overall not directly towards that trigger then later on reintroduce that trigger, then yes, that's what I want you to do. That's what makes sense in my head, right? Uh, so let me know um, if you're still here, right? Let's dig into that working dog mind. Like I get it that that is kind of a abrupt thought process and that's what I want because 
I see so many people trapped in working on it, 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 and they're just focusing on the wrong damn things. Guys, as you're hanging out in here, make sure we are smashing those likes, shares, uh, make sure you guys are hitting the follow for new. We're dropping some real deal knowledge going to help real deal dog owners in here. If you guys have questions, let me know. Uh, what's up, Coopers, Bloopers, and Balls? Good to see you. Um, excited to get to our chat that we've been talking about over the last night. Um, guys, again, my name's Joel. I'm a dog trainer, and I help dogs with big behavioral issues with play, and that's what we're talking about today. Um, so, Nick, uh, he always had more or less the same system, but I stopped with the toys early on because arousal. So he responds different to them as I use them for different things. Food per precision, toys lose a little precision, but increase food and fun. That's exactly where I'm at. Like, if you're a real dog trainer and you're uh, judging Scooby on the precision of his obedience, it's a little sloppy. And I'm okay with that because, first of all, my sports, uh, they're not as precision-based. Um, and I want the dedication. I want the drive. I want the fun. So I'm okay to lose a little precision. Now, with a dog owner and a trainer and a lifetime of action with the dog, those two things ebb and flow and go back and forth. We get a little more motivation, we clean up what it messed up. We get a little more motivation, we clean up what it messed up. And we kind of go back and forth and back and forth and that's why it's good to be versatile and eventually later in the training program be able to do sit down, here's your treat, versus play, 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 down, boom, back to the game, play, 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 which is where I would rather most of you guys be. Um, it can be very sloppy because his obedience is an incompatible behavior. Uh, exactly, right? Um, not only incompatible behaviors, excuse me, I need a drink, not only incompatible behaviors, but incompatible mindsets. I'm not sure if this water's from three days ago. Gross. Oh, you know what? That water's from yesterday, but I poured like I don't know when from water into that cup. So we're not going to be drinking that. Anyways, <clears throat> I will not be getting the jar to you. Young and wild, how are you, friend? Good to see you. Always good to have you. Uh, trying something different today. Hanging out, showing off the art. Uh, Zoe, as anybody might imagine, if anybody wonders what Zoe does when she's not smashing spring, spring pole, she's either laying in her dog bed chilling or doing this. Like literally just kicking it right here by me, just waiting for the time that I'm going to tell her what to do. My golden doodle keeps breaking out of the fence. She's done it since she was a pup. She's almost two. So... So let's talk about that with the golden doodle. I am going to send Zoe to her place and then I'm going to go hang out with her over there. We're going to try a, a new location here, right? Zoe, go to your place. I'm going to sit on the floor. I like sitting on the floor like a little kid. So let's talk about this golden doodle, right? My golden doodle escapes out of the fence and she's been doing so a whole bunch. She thinks it's a game. Most doodles do. All the doodles that I meet that have big problems are usually uh, trying to create the game that their owner is not giving them, all right? A lot of times that can be things like stealing and nipping and stuff like that. But with your case, she's breaking out of the fence. So if she thinks it's a game. I'm going to set up right here for a minute, guys. Now, remember, guys, as we are hanging out here, uh, we are going to get to going outside and doing a little smashy, smashy good time with Zoe in the spring pole. Scoob's going to throw down on some obedience, but we wanted to try having a chat first. Zoe, place. Good girl. So, Zoe's going to hang out there. I'm going to hang out here, and we are going to chat. Uh-uh, place. Come over here, place. Lay down. So with this golden doodle that escapes out of the yard, she thinks it's a game. Well, why is that the game that she is playing and why is she creating that game? Well, she's bored, right? 
you're not creating. Thank you, Cooper, for those rewards. I appreciate it. Why? Remember, guys, all the gifts that come into the room, all that just gets donated to hopefully bringing uh, shelter dogs into the training programs. Zoe, bring that over here. Zoe, bring the bone. Lay down. Over here. I got you. Tell me. On that bed. Good. You can chew it till your heart's content. So if we think about this dog who is escaping out of the yard, well, why is she doing that? Well, because she's bored. And because if she's anything like a typical house pet with owners that, you know, are busy and live regular lives and all of these things, then she's not getting fulfillment on a daily basis. She's not getting enough fun so that she's happy to stay in the yard and hang out. So she wants to go outside of what she's usually stuck in to find something fun, right? So in my head, she's screaming, begging for play. So if you spend the next week to 10 days going out in that backyard every day, and playing with that golden doodle, fetch, tug, run around in circles, flirt pole, nose work, whatever the thing is that you do that then brings value and meaning into that dog's life, those are the, that is going to be where your major improvement comes from. Now, I usually don't leave dogs alone in, an, in a fenced-in area, especially if they're struggling to stay in that area. So you're going to need to go out with them and hang out with them. And when they try to find a new way out of the yard, you're going to have to tell them not to do that. If you need to leave them on a nice long leash to do that, feel free to do so. Okay? But the center of the answer is to play with that dog. Sit, come, down, stay, and heal are not going to fix that, uh, that problem. Um, do you offer classes online? I have a French Bulldog and a German Shepherd. Absolutely, I do. So check this out. I do a ton of virtual training, all right? Uh, since the pandemic, oh, we lived in Illinois. We got shut down. We had to figure something out. We've been doing online training through Zoom for two, three years now, and we're having a ton of success. So if you guys want to talk about what is going on with your dog, what I need you to do is go click the thing up here, okay? That's going to take you to my profile. There's a link right there. Easy, easy, easy. The only thing currently that that link does is take you to my calendar. You schedule a time that works for you for us to sit down on Zoom for 30 to 45 minutes, and we're gonna have a chat. So book the call so that you can tell me all about what's going on with your dogs and what your goals are. After that, I'll tell you what I think your dog needs and how my programs could help. If you would like some help, at that time we can talk about what moving forward looks like if we uh, decide that it's a good fit to work together, okay? If not, cool, you got good information and you're well on your way to doing it yourself, okay? Uh, so go ahead and jump up there and book that call and we will talk soon. One thing about the calls is when you book it, you get an email that gives you a uh, calendar reminder and a link to the Zoom call. Use that calendar reminder because I've been getting really, really busy lately. A couple of posts that you guys can check on have gone kind of bananas. Um, I'm not going to have time to reschedule, so if you miss your call, you're going to have to wait a little while, so make sure you don't do that, all right? Okay, guys, remember, my name's Joel. This is Zoe. I own Scuba and I Dog Training, and throw all of your questions down in the comments. So as you guys are hanging out in the room, we got about 42 people here now. Uh, give me about 10 more minutes, I think, uh, maybe 15, and we're going to take Zoe outside. We're going to get her on the spring pole. We're going to go smashy, smashy. It's going to be a lot of fun. But until then, I want you guys to tell me where you are hanging out from and what kind of dogs you have. So uh, we're kind of all pit bulls all the time around here, but we are always, uh, always uh, available and loving for all of the doggos. Uh, my Shiba Inu is very stubborn and hard to train. So again, there's a couple of factors to this stubborn, hard to train thing. If your dog is stubborn, then you need to find out what the thing is that your dog loves. So before we dig into this, uh, Wendy Lass, 
Um, go ahead and tell me, what does your dog love? What gets your dog excited, right? Is it a ball? Is it playing tug? Is it just going outside? Is it going for a walk? Is it chicken nuggets? What is that thing that gets your dog amped up? Drop that down in the comments, right? As you guys are hanging out, make sure we're clicking that follow. They're always in here giving everybody awesome information. And I don't charge in the lives because having a well-trained dog shouldn't be a privilege, okay? So, uh, coming in from Nashville with the stubborn Sheba. All right. So, Shebas are notoriously uh, aloof, right? So, your dog is more like a cat. But that doesn't mean that learning theory doesn't still apply. So, we need to figure out what motivates that dog and then use that thing. So, if my dog is stubborn, then I'm not going to ask them to do anything. I'm going to find out what they like. I'm going to figure out how I can turn that into a game, and I'm going to build that game. If I build that game alone, not transactionally, right? Hey, bro, me and you, we're going to go outside. We're going to have some fun. We're going to build confidence in the dog. If me and him can play this game and other things, people, squirrels are around and walking by, the dog's gaining confidence. If I am the source of the fun, our relationship is going to get better, right? And that's also going to build my value. So later I can ask the dog to do something and he'll go, yeah, you're so cool. I bet you're going to hook me up if I do the thing that you want. So we don't have any of those things. Then training isn't really that going to be that helpful. You're focusing on the wrong thing. All right. So let's come back to our Sheba in Nashville. And I don't see um, ball, tug, food, my son, full attention, right? Beautiful. Then you have all of the things that you need to get that dog from stubborn to a beautiful, well-behaved dog. The real thing is that the dog's not stubborn. He's uneducated. And you need to take that motivator and teach him what it is that you would like him to do and that that is access, gains access to that motivator. So again, um, play with that dog. Stop worrying about begging it, asking it to do things that it doesn't know how to do anyways. Spend a good week to 10 days doing nothing else but making sure you give that dog enough play that it's super happy every day. And then come back and tell me how your behavior's changed, all right? And as we're doing that, guys, make sure we are tapping that screen, right? Bop, 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 bop. Uh, likes, shares. Uh, if you don't know who to share this with, share it with anybody that's got a dog. Uh, or if you don't have anybody that you know that's got a dog, uh, just hit that copy link button, tricks the algorithm, and we uh, can have ourselves a good old time having this chat here, right? Uh, about 10 more minutes, we're going to take everything outside. We're going to put this beautiful little girl in the spring pole, and you guys are going to see Zoe do her smashy smashy. Once again, guys, I'm Joel. I own Scoob and I dog training. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. Uh, and then if you hear what I have to say and you go, man, that, that sounds like something that I would love to talk a little bit more about. Um, hit the profile up there. Do the thing. It's going to take you right to my calendar so that you can book a Zoom call where we can chat about what's going on with your dog. I can tell you what I think would be the best thing for that dog. If you would like some help with that, we'll talk programs and next steps, okay? Just scheduled a call right now. Uh, if I have a cancellation today, I usually don't do day ofs, uh, but I will for sure let you know if my afternoon gets boring. Um, let's see, Labrador and a Shepherd and an Aussie Roddy. Those are three really, really high-end dogs or they have potential to be, right? So if I teach a high-end dog to sit and stay, place command down, walk nicely on a leash, those things are all well and good. He should know those things. They are in the skill set. But if I got a dog that wants to go 20 miles an hour and I only lev ever let him go five miles an hour, at some point he's going to go, fuck you, I want to go 20 miles an hour, and he's going to go 20 miles an hour. Unless you want to destroy that dog's spirit and go like, no, 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 your life is pretty worthless and you don't have any control of it. That's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. Because if you have a strong dog, they're not going to let you do that. And you're going to find out where what frustration uh, can happen. Okay? 
Got a two-year-old Weimariner in Ohio. Weimariner is notoriously high-energy, whiny, nervous dogs, right? Build the game, play the game in as many different places as possible to build confidence in the dog and the dog's confidence in you, okay? Again, play, 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 play. Man, if you can't play with your dog in your garage, in your driveway, in your front yard, down at the end of the street, in your neighbor's front yard, at the park, at the high school, uh, and inside Lowe's. Like, honestly, I've been training dogs for a long time, and clients, people, you guys, believe that dog training is sit, come down, stay, and heal. So as soon as we get started, you guys want to do sit, come down, stay, and heal. And I have to find the hybrid between giving you guys what you want and my honest opinion that when I get my new puppy in three or four months, he won't hear the word sit, come down, stay, heal, any of those until he's probably almost a year old because we're going to spend that whole first year making sure that when I ask for it, I have his attention. When I don't ask for it, he can confidently do whatever the hell he wants without problem. And when I ask for something, he knows that I've got his best interest at heart, so he's happy to follow. If you don't have those three things, then quit asking your dog to sit. I got three American bullies. Two are five months, and one is four months. Oh my gosh, why do you have so many puppies on your hands all at one time? That's a massive handful, and that is a ton of work. But American bullies, especially what we usually see in poorly bred American bullies, are almost the dogs that this training style is made for. Pit bulls, bulldogs, American bullies, Frenchies, Bostons, any kind of terriers, shepherds, malinois, cattle dogs, right? These are the dogs that you're not going to convince them that sitting still is what they want to do. You'll convince them that they should sit still because you like it. By the way, don't do this to your dog if you don't have an amazing relationship. Let your dogs do what they want, right? Don't bother them while they're chewing on shit. I'm just doing it because she's pretty and you guys don't want to hang out with me if I don't have a dog to look at. Uh, again, make sure... That if you have one of these high energy, high drive dogs, your training program is not teaching them sit and stay. Your training program is teaching them to deal with the amount of energy that they live with in their body and how to handle that. So, uh, all right, we're going to come back out here and do the thing, guys. My name is Joel. Uh, I'm a dog trainer. I own Scoob and I Dog Training. I'm just south of Atlanta. This is my dog, Zoe, all right? My other dog, Scooby. Uh, he's upstairs hanging out on the couch with my wife. Uh, if you guys start smashing all the buttons, we are going to get out, grab the dogs, take them outside, and play. And when I'm outside with my dogs, you're going to notice that the things that we do are play. Yes, at some point, I ask my dogs, hey, pause the game, do a thing. Wait for me to tell you that you can have the game back. But all of that revolves around play. So we build the game up, make it as cool as possible, make the dog as high energy, as smashy, as go, go, go as possible into the game. Once we have that, then we convince the dog, hey, I need you to stop for just a second, and then we give the game right back. I need you to stop for just a second, and then we give the game right back. I need you to stop for just a second. Now you can have your game back. I need you to wait for just a second. Oh, now I need you to sit. Now you can have your game back. And we build that bigger and bigger and bigger so that my motivation is not the treat that I have. My motivation is the game that we play together. Think about if I bought you a soccer ball for Christmas. And I go, hey, here's a soccer ball. That has one amount of value. You love soccer, right? However, you love soccer, not a soccer ball. So if I go, hey, I got you a soccer ball for Christmas. It's a nice day outside. What do you say we go kick it around together? Now, I've 
raise the value of that gift that I got you. If you guys are not tapping that screen, like, shares, follows, passing this around, you guys are screwing up. Um, if we go and kick the ball around, kick it back and forth, that has more value. But even that's going to get boring after a bit. If we set up a goal and some boundaries and we start playing one-on-one -on -one, and now we've added competition so that when you score, I get frustrated and I try harder, now we are bringing even more value to that same soccer ball. Is this making any sense to you guys? If this is making sense, tap some screens, uh, drop your uh, dog's name in the comments and tell me what their favorite game is. Um, I've got the doodle and I have a Frenchton mix. He's good at listening, but he gets jealous and aggressive. So again, this is usually the thing that we have when we run into our pit bulls, our Frenchies, our bulldogs, our American bullies, um, our shepherds, our Malinois, dogs that were designed, dogs that were bred by humans to attach the real consequence after the dog doesn't get what he wants. Okay, so if you frustrate that Frenchie or whatever mix it is, right, he's going to want to, <laughs> there's a fair chance that he may bite because he's frustrated to relieve his frustration, right? If you're holding a leash and I want to go that way, I turn around and bite you. You go, ow, drop the leash. I now get to do what I want. That is a common trait in a lot of our higher end dogs. So what do we do with that, okay? We find, again, the thing that the dog loves, probably play, probably tug, especially if he's apt to bite, right? And we use that, number one, to satisfy that need to bite because he's genetically predispositioned to want to bite. It's who he is, you're not gonna get rid of it, okay? So we find a safe and functional outlet for that. That then helps get that frustration out and then we can start to go, hey, you see the thing that I allow you to do? There's a thing that I don't allow you to do. So you're not allowed to do that, but if you don't do that, I will give you this. Or I will give you this in the vicinity of that. And we start to build the motivation there. Better to take, let's see, better to take a toy than treats when walking outside. That depends on your dog and it depends on what you've done so far. So if we're just building these and I can only get my dog to do this thing in my garage, then taking a walk is going to be something that I'm actually not going to assume I can get control of at all. Instead, I go to the garage and I start there and I go a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more as far as exposing them to the environment, right? All right, guys, I need each and every one of you guys to start smashy, smashy tapping that screen, okay? Uh, I want to get us up to 7,000 likes before we're going to get Zoe to smash on the spring pole, okay? Uh, at that time, we're going to be apt and ready for everybody that's coming in uh, to jump in on the discussion. So make sure you guys are tappy, tappy on that screen. Like, shares, follows. Zoe and I are going to start heading outside. Um, so if you have this dog that's more motivated by food than toys, before we can start using those toys as a functional reinforcer for a behavior like going for a walk, we need to make sure that we can get the dog not only to bite the toy, but maybe even let go of the toy so that we can have a functional walk. Now, if you have a really awesome dog like a Zoe, you don't need step two. All you need to do is hold your toy. And if you reach a point where the dog, oh, it's raining. We got to play spring pole in the rain. You guys want me to play spring pole in the rain? I really need to know because like I'm not playing spring pole in the rain if you guys don't want to play spring pole in the rain. Zoe hates going in the rain. So it's a great time to actually do this. But uh, I'm not going to do it if you guys aren't going to throw down and tell me you want it. So I'm going to need some real love for spring pole in the rain. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to put a hoodie on. So again, um, if your dog is motivated by toys, eventually, yes, we can use toys to train them how to walk on a leash. That is absolutely the direction we're heading. 
I don't have a hoodie in this basket of clean clothes. But you can't start there unless you've got a really do a dog that's really driven to bite and then they'll just hold on to the thing while you walk, right? Let me give you a demonstration of that. Zoe, are you ready? Easy, not yet. So if you have a dog like Zoe, yes, you can just hold on to the thing and do whatever you want. And so if your dog is reactive in any way, shape, or form, you just grab a toy and then as they want to as they want to walk through the parking lot, instead of barking at other dogs, they're playing tug. You guys know what I forgot? I forgot that I have a garage that I can go play in when it's wet raining. Zoe, out! Uh-uh. But if they won't let go, then it's hard to train with. Yes! Good. So, Zoe hates the rain. She rarely goes out in the rain, so getting her to come out in the rain for the tug is a great thing. She wants to spring pole, so she is going to go all the way over there. Fine, we'll let her spring pole. And of course, if you guys are new to my lives, uh, if you're not new to my lives, you know that my battery is going low. So Scoob's going to play in the garage later. But we got some comments here, so let me grab those as we are about to go, uh, go spring pole here. Odin is a Staffy Lab mix. He likes to find things. I try to use that uh, outside during playtime for training. Beautiful. He's working on recall right now. He's going well. Awesome. Once you get him to a point where he really likes to run around and try to find things, you can in fact like have a leash and have him out searching for the thing and then tell him, Zoe, bring and then tell him to come, and then he's got to come to you before he can resume his search. Um, hey, Jenny, good to see you. Time to get muddy. Absolutely. I'm in Florida. Rain is our natural weather. I'm in Georgia. I'm not far from you. One-year-old pity mix. She really doesn't like playing with me too much. She'd rather play with other dogs. So one of the things is of when you is you're farming out your relationship your value there okay so a lot of people will go my dog doesn't like playing with me they want to go to the dog park and play with other dogs well sure and maybe they do prefer that zoe bring if you chew that handle off i'm gonna fight you <laughs> god <sighs> this dog will destroy a $40 tug in three minutes and in seconds, right? And look at that. Look at that. I have four or five of these tugs who are all in wonderful shape except that she eats the handle. Oh, it makes me so mad. So mad. So mad. I know you're all wet. Do you want a spring pole? Are you ready? Get it. So somebody asked what spring pole was. This is spring pole. We've got a tub toy and there is a workout band up here and it's a way for Zoe to play tug at her super intense Zoe tug level without me having to always be the one to play the tug with her. So this is an amazing apparatus if you have a really high drive dog that really loves tug. Just upgraded to a 20 nine foot leash uh that's what we're on today beautiful really nice long leashes are great for taking to the park and making sure that your dog is safe while you play if the leash is 40 feet long then you can play an 80 foot fetch game if you need to while keeping the dog safe zoe out good quiet guard good good get it Good. Now, guys, it does suck out here because it is raining. I did just want to give her a smash or two. We're going to head inside to the garage to finish, and we'll play a little tug in hand, even though I got, you know, this going on. I'll tell you guys about that in a minute. But as we are doing that, make sure you guys are smashing all those buttons and uh, giving Zoe some love. Good girl. We're going to give Zoe a win. 
But we're going to head inside because it sucks out here. Zoe, finished. Finished. Now, again, for the person who said my dog doesn't like food, but my dog does like toys, Zoe, finished. Uh-uh. You're usually much better at that. I'll give you a break because it's in the rain. Um, but anyways, we need the ability to tell our dogs when the game is over, right? So for these dogs like Zoe that have a ton of energy and drive and are go, 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 they need to understand that a game has a beginning and an end. You can't just have it whenever you want. And in fact, I control the game when it starts and stops. Because as somebody said with their doodle that tries to escape out the backyard as a game, we enter into this idea where if the dog is the one allowed to start the game, then the dog is going to start the game. Back and if the dog is the one starting the game and doing so at inappropriate times, that's where we run into problems that can be, um, well, let's go, pain in the ass. Um, so Zoe loves spring pulls. So this is the thing, guys, is when I'm telling you guys to stop training and start playing, that's the thing. It's like, I want to know. Somebody tell me right now that you know without beyond a shadow of a doubt what your dog's favorite thing in the whole world is. What, what, what is the reason that your dog is alive? What is the thing that lights your dog up and make a boring day on the couch worth living? Okay, for Zoe, that is tug. And Zoe wants to smash more than anything else, right? Now, when you have a dog that naturally wants to smash like that, sometimes that leads to problems. Zoe can be dog aggressive. And when she decides to go, you are not going to stop her, okay? Which makes it very important that we keep her satisfied so that she's happy, she's satisfied, she's not walking around the world looking for that conflict because she gets plenty of it in a safe and functional manner, okay? Um, playing chase, right? So playing chase is high on many dogs' lists of a thing that, that is their reason for living. Donna, me, I am my dog's reason for living. Tell me more. Tell me more about that relationship that is fulfilling for the dog. Now, a lot of dogs, now when people tell me that their dog lives for food and that food is the motivator and food is the only thing, I almost always want you to tell me how much time you've been exploring play, what toys that you've tried, what games you've tried, what other motivators besides food have you dug into? Because there are definitely dogs that I can spend days and days and days and days trying to create these toy games with and they just don't want it, right? A lot of times that becomes because they're older and they haven't seen it in so long that they've essentially forgot how to play and they've become old curmudgeons. So, and if that's the case, cool. We can play with food all day long, right? Um, helping dogs, we're going to come hit, hit that one head on here in about 10 seconds, okay? Um, but, you know, I, people that are like, my dog gets excited when I come home with a bag of McDonald's. That's usually because that's the only exciting thing that you present to them, right? Now, if you're like, no, 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 you don't understand. We play ball and tug all day long, but when chicken nuggets come out, this dude goes insane, then... Yes, I will then believe you, you've got more proof in your pudding. So uh, again, think about that on your own. And if we don't have that, then we need for the desire for that motivator to go through the roof. There you go, Donna, run and chase. So if you're running and chase, are you the one running and chasing with the dog, right? Or are they running and chasing other dogs? Because there's a big difference between fulfilling that need, building that relationship with you, and building that relationship with the other dogs at the dog park. There is a negative to 
farming out that behavior. Um, all right, helping dogs and people network. Okay, we're gonna hit this one head on, okay? I like to use ropes. I use ropes, but I get afraid it will make them mean, okay? So, let me ask this question. When, like if you go to the gym, right? If you were to take a child, right? Uh, your son, uh, a nephew, a niece, a daughter, a grandchild, uh, a random kid from the YMCA, right? You take that child to the gym, okay? And as you're walking through the gym, that child punches a heavy bag or a speed bag as they're walking past it, okay? That's what happens. Do you worry that them punching that thing is going to make them an aggressive human? Is that an indicator that that child may want to punch a human? Anybody's welcome to chime in on that one. Uh, my dog cares less about food. I would love to learn to train him with play. Well, uh, Jet, hi, my name's Joel. I own Scoob and I Dog Training. Everything I train, whether I'm using food or not, as much as possible, is done with play. Um, if you guys, if you want to dig into this idea uh, and you want to have a chat about how we can do this for your dog, uh, do me a favor right now. Do the click, right? Do that one, click. And then there's another one in there that makes sense to click again, okay? When you click that, it's going to take you to my calendar, okay? And you're going to be able to book a time for a Zoom call or a phone call, your choice. Zoom is my choice. Um, but you're going to book right on my calendar so that we can get together on a Zoom call. You can tell me all the things that are going on with your dogs, uh, the good, the bad, and your goals. I can then tell you what I think about those behaviors and kind of what would be good for you to, to, to get there to help your dog. If you would like some help with that, I'll tell you how my programs can help with that. And if all oh, that's wonderful, we'll talk about next steps to work together. If we don't want to work together, it's not going to cost you a dime and you're going to learn a bunch of good stuff. So click the button, book the console, let's chat, okay? Um, let's see, anybody answer my question? Um, no, so I got a couple of no's here. So nobody, well, if you, oh, man, I got to stand up for that one because you just knocked it out of the park, okay? If you teach that child that it's not okay to punch people, then it is perfectly acceptable for that child to punch that punching bag, okay? I'm going to tell you this. Dogs are super, super, super smart, okay? There's over 90 million dogs in America, and the general thought is that less than 5% of people call a professional dog trainer, which means that approximately 85 million dogs, okay, walk into somebody's home, that somebody goes, hey, don't pee on my carpet, the dog goes, okay, fine, and that's all the more that they have to do, okay? Okay? So if anybody wants to challenge me on whether dogs are able to understand that what we're doing here is a game, it's not serious, it's not real life, and yeah, of course, maybe the dog misses, maybe the dog even thinks it's a good idea to bite to get a win for the game. That's all possible, right? But if you think that the dog can't learn that lesson, that that's not acceptable, then I am here to tell you that they absolutely can. And those, they're amazing, fantastic results. But if you take a dog like Zoe, okay? Imagine you take a dog like Zoe and you never let her tug. You never let her bite. You never let her get that stuff out. You never let her get that conflict that, out. It's still going to be inside, right? And allowing her to spin that dial, right? Allowing her to feel that feeling is the thing that keeps her from pointing it in the direction of another dog, okay? And the thing is, the thing is, as soon as I, as soon as I see that dog or that kid hit that punching bag, I go, yeah, good job. That's fun, isn't it? Let's do more. Let's go. Let's do more, right? And if we can take this people analogy a little bit farther, okay, 
Um, if we take this people analogy just a little bit farther, okay? Let's take it all the way, right? Let's take it all the way. Some of the people who are the best at controlling their brains, I like to think about like the Shaolin monks, right? Which I'm not studied, so I'm dealing on like a base knowledge here, but these are people that study martial arts to a fantastic proficiency. And uh, if I'm wrong about this group, there are people that do this, uh, and are pacifists, right? And so they build up that ability physically, mentally to do this thing to a great extent so that they have put the places, the, the, the processes in order to control their mind so they don't have to do that. I used to call myself a pacifist until I realized that I don't fight and I can't use weapons. So I don't want to fight. I don't like it. But in fact, you can't call yourself a pacifist if you can't win the fight. It doesn't really work that way. Um, Mary Keaton, uh, I see you uh, tagged somebody here and said PM. Uh, if you guys are needing help, make sure you hit the uh, profile up there and book yourself a call. Click that link, book right on my calendar so that you can tell me all about what's going on with your dog. I can tell you how I could help. And uh, if you do want that help, we'll talk about moving forward. If not, you're gonna learn something great about your dog. Um, I did boxing as a kid, was significantly less aggressive in other areas. Exactly. My aim for that is, uh, is yoga, right? I'm not real like physical, but there are times when I think that maybe I should be. Uh, but that yoga uh, and any of those, like martial arts always have that mental health like, like, uh, component. Uh, very, very, very important. Um, absolutely. So, you know, um, helping dogs with people network, not asking you to change everything you do overnight. But, um, when I, I was right there with you when I first started dog training and, uh, I tell you what, I've seen just by playing a game with a dog, letting them have a little tug, get that hump out. I've seen them do amazing things. Uh, appropriate context for appropriate drive outlets is incredibly misunderstood by dog owners. Uh, what up, Jay Baker? Always good to see you. Uh, I totally agree. And, and the real thing is that um, a lot of dog owners don't understand the animal that lives with them, right? And they go, we can exist with our dog in the house and the backyard and we don't have problems. Yeah, if we try to go for a walk, uh, that dog will, you know, try to bark or pull or lunge or hurt somebody or something like that. So we do have that disconnect when people don't, most of the time it's misguided and they don't know what to do. So they get overwhelmed and they just keep the dog in, right? But there are a lot of people who never had any intention of learning anything about the animal in their home and never attempted to do so. And in that realm, the way that they live with their dog is incredibly unfair to that dog and can have negative consequences. So, um, thanks for the rose, Nick. Uh, guys, we're going to grab Zoe and we're going to do a little smash. She's been being a very good girl. So we're going to give her a little smashy smashy here. I do have to play only with my left hand, uh, because we'll give you guys a view here. Uh, I met a dog yesterday. His name is Capono. Hopefully you guys will meet him again someday. Uh, but quiet. Um, I gave Capono, uh, an opportunity. I may have gotten a little too close, a little too fast. And I was, uh, holding a long leash. I was kind of defenseless. Everything would have been fine. I had a tug behind me. And as I reached for it and stepped back, I, <laughs> I like was stepping off of my driveway, like driveway into the yard and I fell. And so there I am on my ass catching myself, you know, like this. And that just went right into his mouth. So, uh, super fun. Uh, super always great to get bit. It sucks. It hurts. My thumb doesn't work so well. It is twice the size of the one next to it. It's smaller today than it was yesterday. Uh, but the real truth is you do not get to put advertisements on the internet and go, Hey, uh, I'm the guy that can help you with your aggressive dog without getting bit once in a while. It does come with the territory, but it also sucks. Zoe, are you ready? Stay. Middle. 
Good girl. Very nice. Good. Yes. Oh, there we go. So now as we're talking play, so that stuff, doing the thing that I asked, the positions, all those things, that's what I'm going to call work. This is what I'm going to call play. So we have to build this game, not only to be fun and engaging and yada, 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 but if you tell your dog, hey, stop playing, out. Does your dog still want to play enough to do an action in exchange to get the game back? Sit. Good. Yes. So you can see if you don't have a game to use as a reward or if I'm in an environment where my dog won't engage in the game, you can see how that will then, well, if you won't do the payment for free, right? if you won't take the payment for free, then I'm not going to ask you to do a thing that then I'm going to pay you for, right? Like if you're at a concert and you're loving the concert, favorite band ever, woo, right? And I go, hey, you want 50 bucks? And you're like, woo, and I'm like, I'm going to give you 50 bucks. And you're like, woo, then why would I go, hey, man, if you will do 12 jumping jacks, I'll give you 50 bucks. Well, you wouldn't take the 50 bucks for free. Why would you take the 50 bucks after doing work? Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a e uh, out out. Yes. Yeah. Totally fine. Um there's like two nice little punctures in there that I didn't think were there initially and the thing about dog bites is like on the surface they're not that big of a deal, right? Like I'll show you guys here. Hang on. Out. Out. No. Finished. So for not outing the toy, not spitting it out, she then loses that, uh, that rep. So when it comes to dog bites, sometimes they don't look that bad. Like, if you guys see that right there, okay? and you see that right there. They look like a tiny little nick, right? And this one here, that's the worst of it right there, okay? It looks like a tiny little nick, no big deal. But whereas on the surface, you may have, like if this is your skin, you may have like a tiny little cut here, right? But what the tiny little cut doesn't show you is that the tooth you know, if it put a hole in, it goes like that and it gets down into like the joint um, and it sucks. So dog bites fucking hurt, man. Um, life keeps freezing. The life keeps freezing. Um, so my, my, my light is green. What up, Odell? It's been a long time since you came in here. Um, good to see you again. Yes, stop training your dog. Why would I? Why would I say that? I'm a dog trainer. Well, I would say that because I would prefer that you play with your dog. That builds our confidence. That builds our motivation. That builds our relationship. And when we have those things, we have a dog that we can get to do actions uh, in new novel environments. If you don't have that, uh, then What's the point of having a sit if you dog won't even pay attention to you? So that's kind of the, the thing we're going on there. Um, thanks, guys, for straightening us up on the, uh, on the freezing. Hey, in like the next minute or two, somebody keep reminding me to plug my phone in because I'm at 10% and I'm about to forget that and keep going. So uh, I think I can get there while we switch Scoob here in just a second. So guys, if you want to see Scoob, he'll be hanging out in just a minute. Uh, I got about another half hour, so we're going to smash this Zoe a little bit more and then we will go back um, and, and people will go uh, back, excuse me, about five more minutes with Zoe and then we're going to grab Scoob. 
Um, helping dogs and people network. As many dogs are trained for protection, people think they will turn. Um, I wish more people knew. I wish more people thought that, you know, dogs didn't just naturally protect. Um, all right. What's up, Wonder Dog? Good to see you. Hope you are well. Where did my tub go? Are you ready? Get it. Ah, good girl. Oh. Oh. Playing tug with Zoe with your non-dominant hand? You guys should try that game. It is not easy. And to come in here and, you know, ow. Right? <laughs> good. Good girl. Ah. Oh. Oh. Good girl. I have two Shivas, every bit as stubborn as they are sweet. So this is a great help. Thank you. Absolutely, Sarah. Remember, most dogs, especially most pet dogs, are not as much stubborn as they are uneducated. Out! Out. And if we don't understand uh -uh, what motivates our dogs, then we haven't discovered the way to educate them and motivate them. So, of course, people are going to be stubborn, people, dogs, whatever, if you don't have the ability to motivate them. Yes! So that's like me going, hey, will you come over and build me a new deck and I'll give you a hundred bucks, right? Well, first of all, building me a new deck should probably cost $5,000, not $100. Second of all, do you own the skill set to do that? So a lot of pet owners are asking their dogs to do something they have no ability to do and no motivation to do. And if that's the case, then stop training your dog and start playing with your dog to build the confidence, the motivation, and the relationship so that then when you ask them to sit, they have the ability to just exist in the space, listen to you, right? Nobody thinks about the skill set of just existing in a new place. Think about it. I am, we're decent friends. Like, we're like acquaintances, right? So think about it. We're acquaintances, and I invite you to a party, right? It's my party, okay? I want you to come. You're a pretty cool person, right? You show up to my party. Do you imagine that we are going to hang out the entire time? No, it's my party. I've got 40 of you, right? To spend my time with, right? So then you don't know anybody else at the party. Is just being at that party by yourself going to cause you to have feelings? Is that going to make you a little anxious? Are you good at that environment? Do you suck at that environment? Where are you? And that can give you just a little taste. Imagine that party was in a foreign country. And you didn't have the ability to communicate with anybody at that party. How does that affect your feelings, right? Imagine at that party, you can't speak with the same language as anybody. And then something happens, right? A big, loud noise or a big, scary dude walks into the building. Are you feeling feelings yet? Oh. And if you can't, put yourself in that idea, well, then you're big time missing the point. Um, all right. So Sarah, just like I've been telling everybody else, if you would like more help than just this info, right? Uh, you can click the link in my profile. That's going to take you to my calendar. The only thing that we do with that link here on TikTok is schedule that almost like that. I've been building that uh, Jay Baker over time, and I just threw some like more pieces on the end of that, like the whole going to the party, and then they don't talk your language, and then something bad happens. I'm a scary guy. I just added all that right here on the moment, and like that is you're right. That's a good one. We gotta keep that one. No, finished. You're done. You are done. 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 I am so tired of you eating my damn handles. Um. So yeah. Anyways, guys, if you think that any of this makes sense at all and you would like to see if we can find a way to find a solution to some of your behavioral problems with your dogs and you want some individual time click that link book a consultation it's free 
so that you can tell me all about your dog. I'll tell you what I think, what would help. And then Jay Baker on the, on the front. And then if we want to work together, you want me to help you through that process. Cool. If you don't, cool. Enjoy the information. Talk to you later. Bye. You know? All right. Charge the phone, charge the phone, charge the phone, charge the phone. This is how the ADHD brain works. Charge the phone, charge the phone, charge the phone. We're going to grab Scoob and we're going to head back out to the garage charger. Awesome. I'm glad that I'm rolling into some new folks in the live today. Uh, I've been doing lives five days a week for the past 18 months. They're a lot of fun. Usually, I'm taking a lot more time. Okay, Scoop, to play with the dogs, and I, uh, I want the dogs to be the focus, but um, kind of starting, I think this may be the start of, of the crusade that I have always wanted to launch, which is play with your damn dog, right? If you have a good enough game with your dog, then you really don't need to train as much. So like if I'm at the park, okay, and say I have, like with my dogs, I have a word, right? It's spelled R-E-A-D-Y. I'll say it in a minute. And that means, hey, dog, it's time to play. It's time to party. We're going to do the thing. I got to lose the mic to plug in the phone so you guys don't lose the whole live. So if the audio gets terrible, you guys let me know how that changes and how that works out for you. Uh, also, make sure we are tapping those screens, guys. Like, shares, follows. Um, okay, so let's think about this. So I've got a word that goes, hey, dog, it's time to play, right? And unless I say that word, then I don't let the dog, we don't play, right? So if the dog loves the game more than anything in the world, and I tell them, hey, your game is available, and the dog will come pay attention to me because that's important, then sit, come down, stay, and heal is not important. I literally don't need it. You could survive on game alone. All the rest of the things are fantastic. There's so many reasons why we need them and I would, I, I would implore everybody to build those. However, with the limited amount of time that pet owners are actually gonna spend with their dogs, the limited amount of knowledge that pet owners actually want to gain to work with their dogs, right? Sometimes I can only get that one thing taught before they're like, yeah, that was enough trying, we're done with that. And so, if I can get you guys doing one thing, that would be it. Um, Rachel, I'm glad to have you. Glad you caught the live today. Uh, on the list of things that I would love to do more is uh, schedule these lives. And honestly, my business is finally starting to get rolling. Uh, and I'm going to need to schedule these lives so that people can't uh, schedule their lessons on top of them and to make sure that you guys still get the lives because this is really important to me. So uh, my great Dane has a crap heel right now because relationship is key. Yeah, you gotta build that relationship first. Healing is a team behavior, right? I'm driving, he's doing what I say, he's following, okay? So if our relationship sucks, then absolutely. Quit working on your heel. Right? So the video that I'm, that I'm putting out tomorrow, so if you guys click the profile, you see the last two videos that I've made, they both stop with, start with stop training your dog. So we're on a path here for me to want to challenge you guys to stop training your dog over say the next week to 10 days. Stop it. I mean completely. I mean, do not, unless you need to, to get through your days, don't say sit, come, down, stay, heal, right? If you have a marker word that rewards that sit, don't use it unless you're using it in play. If you happen to play with your dog and you have a good game and you like to play, 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 out, stop the game, sit, down, heal, whatever, stop doing that. Just play. No outs, no uh, obedience in play, just play raise the value of that game. No stops on it, no breaks, just play, 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 play. Do that for 10 days, do that for 10 days, okay? Then, on the, like the 11th day, play, 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 out, heal, boom, 
As soon as the dog gets there, boom, reward. Then you are now, now you're worth cooking with gas. Um, oh God, Jay Baker, we've been working our asses off around here. We did, we did take a little time off to hit the uh, Dominican Republic for a vacation that my wife won because she's amazing. Uh, and she got rewarded by her company that she works for and they sent us to the Dominican Republic for five days. It was awesome. Uh, but back at it uh, these days. So let's give Scooby a little play. Now, usually when we're doing our more precise work, our retrieve, okay, we reward Scooby with food. It is a less driven, um, he, he's more excited for toys than he is for food, so if he's less excited, he can think better. Center. So let's see how he does now that he sees visually that this is going to be his reward. Oh. Should have been straight, but whatever. Retrieve. Nice and straight. Drop. Yes. Good. So again, now you see we're building even more complex behaviors. This behavior is not just... Put your butt on the floor. This behavior is take a position, center, but you're my legs. I'm going to throw the thing. You're going to stay there. Then you're going to wait until I tell you. Woo! You're going to wait until I tell you to go get it. Then you're going to pick it up. Now, if you pick it up by the end, nope, you've got to pick it up by the middle. Then you got to bring it back to me. You have to take a front sit position and wait until I tell you to drop it in my hand. Out. Good. So it's a very complex behavior, and we need to have enough motivation built through the game to be able to sustain all of that. <laughs> yeah, Scooby's a blast, man. He's an absolute blast. Out. Out. Uh-uh. Now, let's try something else. We're gonna make it real complex, okay? So, and we're gonna jump right into this. Usually, I want you guys to go very slow, right? To build and build and build, little by little by little, which we've been doing, which means that we can roll the dice on trying something we've never done before, all right? And this is going to be called discrimination. I have a toy that is a reward. I have a uh, dumbbell that is the thing I want him to retreat. This is work. This is reward. Okay? That one goes there. That one goes there. Now, we can totally expect... Uh, thank you for the shares, guys. Jess, Joy, ah, uh ah. -uh. Out, out, drop, thank you. So, we can totally expect that Scooby, when told to retrieve that one, is going to go ahead and take the toy, right? We can guess that he might do that, but let's see how he's going to do here, guys. I'm going to need, if he does this, I'm going to need you guys to do all of the button pushing, the likes, the shares, the follows, Comment in loose movies, all the good things, right? Let's try him out. Heel. If he gets it right, he gets a party. If he gets it wrong, he doesn't get anything. Retrieve. Good. Drop. Get it. Good boy. Oh, that's my guy. Now, did you guys watch him? Did you see him make that conscious decision, right? He went for the toy. He was like, oh, that's my toy, I want it. But then right as he got there, he remembered he wasn't told his word to party. He was told his word to bring the other one back to me, right? First time laying those two out together ever. Big win, love this dude. Now, so when the dog really does the thing well, okay? We have our game here that the better the game is, the bigger the reward is, right? 
So if I hand you a $10 bill, that has a certain amount of value. If I hand you a $100 bill, that has a different value. So when he does the first thing, he gets it right, he smashes it out of the park. We're done training, and the rest of what we're doing is play Ooh. and his reward. And so if this tug game lasts five minutes, then the reward gets bigger and bigger and bigger the longer we play. Ugh. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate that all. Uh, Rachel, that's what spring poles are for, right? But again, this is where people get themselves in trouble a little bit by having a dog that they're not all the way compatible with. Yes! But that doesn't mean that this is the only way to do it. So... If you guys have seen me on a normal, not rainy day, out. Yes, we're out playing spring pole, which is a tug toy basically attached to a garage door spring or a workout band. A good dog will play on that for a while and get themselves satisfied. Out. Yes, good. However, um, some dogs don't love that. Some dogs, uh, some dogs don't love that. Some dogs. Um, some people don't have a place for that or can't put that together and that's okay. As we build into our training programs longer and longer and longer and longer, we can then drop, drop. So that's enough of a reward for that one. I'll work on just a little bit more, okay? So if I'm playing the game, just playing the game like we're talking about, okay? We're for the most part working on physical strength. We're working on satisfying the dog physically, right? Muscles, teeth, that kind of stuff, okay? However, how many of you guys have ever been sitting in an office for a whole day, right? You didn't move hardly at all, and as soon as you're done, you're exhausted because you were at the computer all day long, right? That's mental energy, and honestly, it's more taxing than physical energy. So, scoop, heel, we make him think down, front, center, good, front, down, and the whole time that he's doing obedience, he's thinking, right, so then we bounce back and forth from expending mental energy to physical energy, front, Set, heel, uh-uh, heel. And if he doesn't get it right, he doesn't get his game. So he's got to be thinking. He's got to be using his brain, right? Down, yes, ooh. And when we get that back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, if you have a high-end dog, that's the way you get your dog dealt with for the day in 20 minutes. Finish, enough. If you are just playing or just training, you're working one or the other and not both. So if you wanna go outside and throw the ball and just throw the ball, bring it back, 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 throw the ball, bring it back. Every two or three days, you're gonna add another throw to the necessity to train that dog. And pretty soon you're going to have an awesome long distance athlete. Let her win frequently to save the arms. Exactly, Rachel. I just did a, a lesson with that. Somebody not too long ago. Just a couple days ago. Wish my dog had this much self-control. Very expiring. Um, Jess, he didn't come that way. He didn't, he, he, he didn't, I didn't, he, he had zero self-control when I met him. When I met him, I was working at a different training facility for somebody else. His owner brought him in and paid $6,500 for him to be in a training program. This dog, when he was somebody else's dog, he used to need to go to daycare five days a week 
to expend his energy so that he would go home. And when he was at home in the evening with his owners, he would be calm uh, for the evening, right? Self-control is not something that dogs have. It doesn't naturally exist in dogs. Now, it becomes, if, if a dog were to exist naturally in the wild, dogs are not wolves, but if so, they gain their impulse control because if they just start flying in at a thousand miles an hour trying to catch a bird or a squirrel or whatever, they're never gonna get to that. They're too loud, they're too fast. They see them from a mile away, right? So the dog needs to gain some impulse control. Stop. Stop, snatch, right? And when you have that idea, well, what does that look like? Sit, stay for the toy, snatch. So if the toy is the bird or the squirrel, you're asking for the sit or the stay. We are turning those dials that mother nature would naturally use to train the dog. So why are we train with play? You guys ever seen, um, so I'm gonna smash some questions here in a second. Do I watch anime? My son does. Um, I've seen a few. Uh, most of them are like the ones on Netflix that, you know, are, are not dirty movies, but you know, they're, they're on Netflix. Uh, I used to, back in the day, those are probably the ones I've seen. So that's my anime um, thoughts. So, but ask your question that's related to anime and um, if nothing else, I'll tell my kid. Um, Cause he, that kid, that kid literally wakes up at five o'clock in the morning on a school day, like, like, I, like I'm up because I sleep like shit and his alarm's going off. Like, Why is the alarm going off? Because he's waking up at five o'clock in the morning to watch anime before school. I don't know, man. Anyways. Um, so yeah, the, the impulse control uh, that comes from the game. And so we're going to wrap up here because I got a call in about 15 minutes. One of those ones I've been telling you guys about. So if you don't have yours booked, make sure you book the call. Uh, click the clicky up in the clicky. Um, the link in the profile, that's going to take you to my calendar. You can book a call uh, so that we can talk about your dog. Uh, you can tell me everything that's going on and I will tell you what I think they need. And then uh, if we want to talk about how my programs would help and what that would look like moving forward, we'll do all of that. Uh, and then get you started in a training program if you want to. Um, okay, so a couple points. Let me come back to the puzzle pieces on the floor because like, yes, um, if we think about the natural mechanism that mother nature uses to teach, okay? Think about any nature documentary you've ever seen. Hopefully David Attenborough was involved, right? Think about when you watch like the lions or the bears or the wolves or some of these predators, right? And you see them outside their den and you see the little pups or the cubs, the littles, right? And what are they doing? They're like, jumping on each other and biting each other and growling at each other, right? And it's this little tiny, cute, like super uncoordinated play that they're doing. But if you break that down, what they are doing is stalking each other, chasing each other, attacking each other, biting each other. They're practicing murder, which is what they do. And so if you think about that, that play is mother nature's mechanism to teach. So why wouldn't we use that same mechanism to teach our dogs? Um, on the floor, are these just foam puzzle pieces? Yes, they are. And they're great, okay? Um, I had lots of different floors in training rooms. And these are just really super thin ones from Amazon. Uh, I have some in my office too that I just put up there to make a, a workout floor for my wife. Now, when I went in for the second time, uh, these are the half inch. Uh, the ones I have in my office are the three quarter. I would spend the money to do um, an inch if I was gonna redo this floor. Um, because of the impact on my feet and my knees and my back and all that kind of stuff. More padding is better. Um, but, fantastic. One of the best training room floors that I can do. Dog pisses on them, ruins, like you can clean it up, cool, no big deal. Uh, but they are a little absorbent. So eventually you're gonna to wanna to replace one. You literally just peel one up, put it back down. You wanna use a little bit of um, tape underneath to hold them in place. But yeah, they're great. Um, if you want, I can send you a link to the ones I used. Uh, just hit me up. 
Dog's very smart, just need to figure out how to teach him better. Hi, my name's Joel, I'm a dog trainer. I'd be happy to help. Um, my dog practice murder all the time. I love dogs that practice murder. Um, Zen Zenitsu, I answered that question about anime already. Um, my teenage dog practices murder on the daily. They usually do. Those are the ones I like. All right, guys. Uh, I think that that's going to just about do it. I'm going to try and grab a little food, maybe a drink. Uh, since that water I tried to drink like 45 minutes ago was super gross. So um, if you guys need anything at all, make sure you uh, let me know. I'm always happy to help. And uh, yeah, we're here three to five days a week doing stuff just like this. Uh, training dogs, having chats, answering questions. So any way that I can help you guys. Make sure you let me know. Um, all right. Have a wonderful day, y'all. Uh, and Rachel, don't miss the next live. Go into my profile right now. And up next to my name, there's a little bell there. And you can set it up to where you get notifications when I go live. So go do that. All the rest of you, too. Say goodbye, Scoob.